John chapter number 19. Uh, we'll begin reading in verse 38. Of course, John chapter 19 deals with the crucifixion of the Lord. The Lord had been crucified, and the Lord had given his life. And when we get down to verse 38, we find an interesting uh, thought from the Word of God that is not expounded on a lot. So let's look at it. Verse number 38, the Bible says, And after this, after what? The Lord giving up his life for us. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus, and there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh, and aloes, about an hundred pound weight, and they took the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher wherein was never man yet laid." There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for the good singing tonight. We thank you for the good testimonies. We thank you for answering prayer. We're certainly grateful that Miss Sonny was able to be in service tonight. Lord, we pray you'd continue to touch her strengthen her and heal her body. Lord, we do pray for Miss Crystal. You'd continue to touch her the same and help her. We pray for Miss Pam who's sick tonight, that Lord, you'd touch her. We pray for those that are traveling. We pray for those that will be traveling. We pray for the others that are sick and others that are providentially hindered. Uh, Father, we certainly do pray for our friends in the Caribbean. And Lord, we thank you for Lord, opening the door for us to have Christ in the Caribbean and God uh, uh, open the door for us to meet many of those dear folks and those dear churches there. And God, I pray you protect them with these impending storms. Uh, God, put a hedge about them and protect our friends. And God, we certainly pray your will be done there. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless those that are working with the teens over on the other side. And God, I pray for those young people, the peer pressure they face and the problems this old wicked world will throw at them. I pray that while they're here, they'd hear truth from the Word of God that will, Lord, uh, help them when they're faced with the snares of this world. Uh, and God, I certainly pray for our young people. Thank you for them. God, you have blessed us with them, and God, thank you for them. Uh, now for the next few minutes, Lord, I pray you'd help us from the Word of God. You know every need of every heart here tonight. I certainly pray that you'd put a hedge about us. Uh, I pray that, Lord, uh, uh, you would be high and lifted up in our midst, and I pray that your perfect will would be accomplished. Uh, again, we ask that you'd use this unworthy vessel, and we ask that you would help and bless your people. Uh, Father, now uh, get glory to your name, and Father, we'll not fail to bless you for it, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things from the text. Uh, I want you to, first of all, imagine, if you will, the courage it took for Joseph of Arimathea. In verse number 38, it says, And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Can you imagine the turmoil? Can you imagine the chaos? Can you imagine uh, all that had transpired? Uh, Jesus has been crucified. Uh, Jesus was tried secretly at night, which was against the law. Uh, Jesus had been beaten beyond recognition. He's been crucified. Uh, Jesus gave up the ghost. Uh, uh, the Father turned out the Son for three hours while he hung on the cross. Uh, 
after he uh, uh, said it is finished, uh, the veil in the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Uh, 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 the, uh, the earth quaked uh, and graves opened up uh, and bodies of the saints started pouring out of the grave. Can you imagine uh, all that is going on uh, and the Jews have put forth uh, a decree that not only uh, uh, is Jesus done, uh, any of his disciples that continue in the same doctrine Doctrine, uh, they'll come after him too. Uh, uh, here in the midst of all that, uh, one of his disciples had compassion and said, uh, I'm going to do what I can for my Savior. Can you imagine the courage it took to do that? Mm. Can I say living for Jesus today takes courage? Mm. Making a stand on the Scriptures today takes courage. I mean, the world tells us uh, we're mean-spirited if we believe the Bible. No, we love folks, and we want to share the love of God with them. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, uh, the love of God doesn't say come to Jesus as you are and stay as you are. The love of God says uh, uh, whosoever will may come and drink of the water of life freely. But if you get a drink, you're going to be different. Because when Jesus saves you, he changes you. Oh, uh, thanks to Calvary. Uh, we don't go here anymore, huh? But can you imagine the courage? And then look at the compassion. Look again at verse number 38. The Bible says uh, uh, he, uh, that Pilate had gave him leave, and he says he came therefore and took the body of Jesus. Uh, think about that message you, ha you preached on where they was carrying the ark, they had God on them. He literally had God on him. He took the body down from the cross. Hmm? Had the Lord on him. That's a whole other message. And it says, And there came also Nicodemus. We know Nicodemus from chapter number 3 of John. Nicodemus, which came to him by night. Uh, uh, we find that these two men had compassion. They came mm, to make certain the Lord was buried properly. Mm, had compassion. Can I say that's another thing lacking in our day and age? Folks that have compassion. We imagine the courage. We imagine the compassion. Now look at the care. Look again at verse 39. It says, And they brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. And they took the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with, with the spices uh, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Can you imagine the care that it took in all the chaos and all the threat they still took the time to take the proper spices and aloes and anointment and anoint that bloody body that the Lord Jesus Christ gave for the sin of mankind. He was beaten beyond recognition. Isaiah said that he was marred much more than any man. Isaiah 52, 14, uh, 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 that body uh, had been beaten. Uh, uh, can I say that the Jews uh, beat a man with 39 stripes because they felt 40 was inhumane, uh, but the Jews did not uh, uh, crucify the Lord Jesus Christ. The Romans did, and the Romans were known to beat a man up to 100 times. Uh, they wanted to send a message do not mess with Rome. Do not cross Rome. Uh, if you mess with Rome, this is what's going to happen to you. Uh, uh, the uh, psalmist and Psalm 22 uh, uh, prophesied uh, about the Lord being on the cross, and he said, My bones stare at me. Uh, the flesh had been ripped off of this body. Uh, uh, the muscles had been torn in uh, uh, into his bones were poking out of this body. Uh, this body was a mess. Uh, he only needed it for a short time. Uh, he gave it all for you and I. Uh, he emptied himself of his life's blood. Uh, here this uh, uh, ripped, torn up, uh, uh, fractured body. Body, uh, is laying there and yet they took the care to anoint it, uh, to put the spices and the aloes in. Uh, they wound it up properly. Uh, can you imagine all going through their minds? But they said, Jesus means so much to us. We're going to show him the proper care. Imagine, if you will, the cost. I don't know how much a hundred pound weight of spices cost. But it wasn't cheap. Can I say, if you're going to serve the Lord, it's going to cost you. It'll cost you friends and family. 
It'll cost you popularity. It'll cost you. You'll be called names because you love people. But also look at verse 41. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never a man yet laid. Uh, there laid they Jesus, therefore, because the Jews' preparation day for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Can I say it cost? Joseph gave up a tomb that he had hewed out for himself and his family. He gave to the Lord Jesus. I don't know how much a tomb cost back then. And do you realize that most of the tombs throughout Jerusalem housed many bodies? That's why in John chapter 11, when Lazarus is laid in the tomb and they put a stone over the tomb, Jesus had him remove the stone and he said, Lazarus, come forth. If he'd have said, come forth, everybody out of that tomb would have come forth. He said, Lazarus, come forth. For you to have your own private tomb, that cost. Now, something interesting, and by the way, this was Joseph's tomb. Because Matthew chapter 27 said, verse 59, And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, verse 60, and laid it in his own new tomb which he had hewed out in the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. If you read the last verse, in there, verse 42 in, in chapter 19, it said that the, the tomb was nigh the garden, or nigh where, where he was crucified. Now, you know me, I'm a big book guy, and you know I got a lot of books. As a matter of fact, I had an uncle come uh, for the wedding and went to my office. He couldn't believe the books. I said, this is just a portion of them. I have over 25 sets of commentaries. And I always like to get perspective on things when I'm studying things. And that, that part of the verse there where it says, uh, 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 the, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. This is why you don't put confidence in men. Every one of them commentators made it out to think, to say that they were in a hurry so they just found a, the closest tomb and threw him in there. Why didn't they go back and read Matthew 27? Let me help you something. Joseph didn't just run down and hew out this tomb and then come get the body of Jesus. You never have time. Do you know how long it takes to dig, out, dig through rock and make a tomb? He had had that thing prepared probably for years. And when he begged the body, he knew where he was going to put it. He was given of his own substance. Can you imagine the cost? Hmm? But he loved Jesus that much. Now, I want to look at something now. This is what piqued me in the, these verses. The first thing I want you to notice, look at the panic because of the Jews. Listen to the wording. Look again in verse 38. Being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, here it is, for fear of the Jews. We see there's panic, fear, because of the Jews. Notice the practice of the Jews. Look in verse 39. And there came also Nicodemus, which was at the first, came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of, of, of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight, and they took the body of Jesus and wound it in linen cloth, which is spices. Here it is as the manner of the Jews is to bury. By the way, let me just say this, because I get asked this all the time. Brother Doug, is, is cremation wrong? We've got to be careful putting titles on what's right and what is wrong and all those things. All I can tell you is God told his people to bury the bodies. Amen. Hmm? Now, I know in this day and age, in this economy, it's a lot cheaper to cremate. Let me say the pagans are the ones that always burnt the bodies. They didn't burn Jesus' body. So you can take that at face value, all right? But notice it was the manner of the Jews. 
Verse 38 is for fear of the Jews. We see the panic because of the practice of the Jews, the manner of the Jews. But then look in verse 42, the preparation day of the Jews. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Now, I'm reading this. I'm just reading it. That's all I was doing. I was just reading. And I took note. Wait a second. We see the fear of the Jews. We see the manner of the Jews. We see the Jews' preparation day. And that just kept ringing over in my mind about the Jews. The Jews are God's chosen people. And there are three elements in these few verses that are dealing with how the Jews were doing things. But the one that really stuck out at me was in verse 42 of the Jews' preparation day. Now what was that all about? Why did they have to get Jesus' body off of the cross and get him in a tomb because evening was coming and because it was the Jews' preparation day? What does that mean? How many of you remember the Passover feast? Exodus chapter number 12, God gave Moses the direction for every family to take a lamb, a household for a lamb. If you've never heard that message God gave me 100 years ago, too much lamb, go look it up. Brother Randy's got a copy of it. Go look it up. Listen to it. But God told them what to do with the lamb and how to prepare the lamb and take the blood of the lamb and put over the door of the lintel of the house and when the death angel came to Egypt uh, and he was coming requiring the firstborn uh, of every household uh, he said when I see the blood I will pass over you well Passover is coming and now it's preparation day of the Jews what does that mean preparation day meant that they was preparing to sacrifice the lamb for the Passover feast. It was the day of preparation for the lamb to be sacrificed. And I want to preach on this thought for a few minutes tonight. They were focused on the wrong lamb. They were focused on the wrong lamb. They was all about the preparation day to slay the lamb. But they were focused on the wrong lamb. Do you think it did not speak to them when Jesus said it is finished uh, and the veil was rent. Uh, do you not think that all of a sudden somebody had to say wait a second here. Uh, we're not to look on the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, we're not to go into the most holy place. Uh, but here God uh, has rent uh, the veil uh, and it's all exposed. Uh, he exposed them uh, because their focus was on the wrong lamb. Uh, do you realize that veil was as thick as the width of a man's hand? Uh, it was four to six inches thick. Uh, uh, you just couldn't go in there and tear that. Uh, listen, we could grab those drapes uh, and and you could tug at it. You couldn't tell it. Uh, but God took something much thicker than that. Uh, and he split it from top to bottom uh, to signify uh, he didn't need that mercy seat anymore. Uh, there was one before his throne. Uh, and the blood of his darling son is what he'll accept from now on. Uh, they were focused on the wrong lamb. Can I say some things about the lamb? And I know I mentioned some things about the lamb this morning. But let me uh, show you how they were focused on the wrong lamb. Can I say first of all that the lamb by God's command was to be separated. They were to separate the lamb from the fold uh, and put it away for 14 days and 14 nights. Uh, can I say, uh, there's never been anybody like Jesus. Uh, he is far above anybody else. Uh, he uh, uh, came from glory. Uh, he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, can I say, uh, he was separated from the moment he walked out of glory uh, into Mary's womb uh, and came forth. Uh, never a man spoke like Jesus. Uh, never a man did the miracles that he did. Uh, 
Never a man did all that he did, and certainly three days later, uh, nobody ever resurrected from the grave under his own power. Uh, they were focused on the wrong lamb. Uh, if they would have just uh, paid attention to all the sermons he preached, uh, if they'd have paid attention to all the great miracles he did, uh, do you know Isaiah 35 said, uh, nobody can open up blinded eyes but God, uh, yet Jesus opened up blinded eyes. Uh, Jesus resurrected people from the dead. Jesus touched withered hands and made them whole. Uh, Jesus touched the lame and made them whole. Uh, all manner of sickness was brought to Jesus uh, and he made them whole. Uh, Jesus took sinners uh, and changed their lives uh, and made children of God out of them. Uh, only Jesus could do what Jesus did. Uh, they was interested in a little uh, a lamb that they'd taken away from the fold, uh, not, really the lamb, not realizing the Lamb of God, uh, even though John the Baptist, whom they said was a prophet indeed, uh, uh, cried out that he was the Lamb, uh, uh, not to push back our sins, uh, but to take away our sins, uh, if they'd have just been focused on the right Lamb. They wouldn't be in the turmoil they're in over there right now. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Amen. I'm glad the verse didn't end there. But as many as would receive him, to them gave he power to be the sons of God. Uh, the lamb, by God's command, was to be separated. There's never anybody like Jesus. Uh, uh, can I say this? Uh, the lamb, by God's command, was to be spotless. The lamb was to be examined... Uh, by the high priest and he was to be without spot and without blemish can I say that Jesus lived a sinless spotless holy life uh, and even when he was tried and examined by Pilate uh, Pilate said I find no fault uh, in him uh, as touching the law there was no fault uh, as touching uh, a sin there was no fault uh, he was the perfect lamb of God uh, hey they crucified him for two things uh, number one he was known as the friend of publicans and sinners uh, aren't you glad he's a in the night. Uh, he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, uh, how can he love us? Because he's our friend. Uh, he laid down his life for his friends uh, and they crucified him uh, because he called God his father, uh, making himself equal with God. Uh, he is equal with God. Uh, hey, from the beginning it's been the Father, the Word, the Son of God, uh, and the Holy Ghost. These three agree in one. Uh, hey, uh, they were always together in the beginning uh, they were together at the river Jordan when Jesus uh, had John baptized him when he came up uh, uh, the spirit of God descended in the form of a dove uh, and the father said this is my beloved son uh, in whom I am well pleased uh, uh, if God was pleased with him as the lamb uh, we certainly can be pleased uh, oh he was spotless he was, sec he was uh, separated. But the lamb was to be sacrificed. And I say there's nothing that gets under my, under my crawl more than some lame brain preacher say that they killed Jesus. There's a lot of people love John MacArthur Jr. out there in California. He's not even a Baptist, and yet many Baptists got his books. And he says that they murdered Jesus. Matter of fact, he even said that Jesus' blood was no different than any old dead polecat. The earth soaked up his blood uh, like it did a polecat. Can I tell you something? That is not true. Jesus took every drop of blood that he shed uh, and he took it to the mercy seat. Uh, that's why I told Mary Magdalene on resurrection morning, uh, touch me not for I've not yet fully ascended unto my father. Uh, he had to take the precious blood that he shed, uh, put it on the mercy seat. Uh, that blood speaks for you and me tonight. Uh, uh, we're saved by his blood, uh, washed in his blood. Uh, thanks be unto God for his blood. Uh, but he had to say, 
sacrifice himself. Uh, he gave his life for you and I. Uh, hey, when he saw that all things were fulfilled, uh, he had appeased the law. Uh, he had appeased the wrath of God. Uh, he said, it is finished. Uh, and he gave up the ghost. Uh, he gave his life uh, that you and I might have life. Uh, have it more abundantly. Uh, I say, blessed be the name of the Lord. sacrificed and all the while they were around the cross they could have looked and saw the lamb but yet they were focused on the wrong lamb they're saying we got to get this over with so we can get to the business of preparation day it took the average man three to four days to die on a cross Some as many as a week most people did not die on the cross because of the beating or because of the piercing of the nails and the hands and the feet. Most people that died on the cross died of suffocation. And what they would do, Brother Ron, they'd come, uh, if it was getting close to preparation day and they were not dead, they'd break their legs uh, because they, they would push up and get air and that was what was keeping them alive. But yet the scripture said not a of him was broken brother Donald so if he broke his legs the word of God wouldn't have been true mm, what can I say he saw all things were fulfilled and he gave up the cross after just being there for a few hours matter of fact they didn't believe he was dead they come around they thrust that spear in his side to make sure he was dead uh, he gave up the ghost he sacrificed himself he took our sin. He took our cross. He took our death, my dear friends, so that you and I could be saved from our sin and have eternal life. Amen. By the way, after he gave up the ghost, he descended into the lower parts there. He took our hell. Mm. Oh, bless the darling name of Jesus. Can I say that the lamb not only was to be sacrificed by God's command but it was also to satisfy God's expectations. I'm interested in Brother Adrian's study that he's going to do. Now, I make people uncomfortable, make people mad, and I get ready to say things like I'm about ready to say, but I'm going to say them anyway. You see, in the ceremony and the service that God gave for Moses to give to his people and they would carry out in the temple you just didn't come as you are come Johnny come lately and do as you please and God be pleased with it you remember in Jesus' ministry when he came to the synagogue and by the way you find every Sabbath day Jesus in the synagogue so if it was right for Jesus why isn't it right for us we're called Christian, aren't we? That means Christ-like. I just hadn't figured it out, Brother Ron, when we get so spiritual, we don't have to come to church. Matter of fact, the Bible says so much more as you see the day approaching. What day? His coming. You look around this wicked world, we don't need less church. All these churches closing on Sunday night, we need more church, friends. Uh, but can I say, you not only didn't come when you want... You remember when... Jesus came to the synagogue and he and he up he, he made a three corded whip and he drove the money changers out of the temple. Do you understand what was going on? When you was to come to the temple, you was to bring an offering. Now sometimes you was to bring a lamb. Sometimes you was to bring a bull. Sometimes you was to bring turtle doves. You was to bring an offering. They made turtle doves for the poorest of the poor. Anybody had something to bring. And yet people got so lazy, Miss Lisa. They wasn't raising their lambs, wasn't raising their bulls, wasn't raising their turtle doves. They, they'd put God on the back burner and, and coming to the house of God, that was a convenient thing. And so they gotten so lazy that they would come to the house of God and they would pay the money changers for turtle doves so they'd have something to take in. Or they'd change their 20s into ones so they could give a dollar, they could tip God instead of tithing God. Hmm? Uh, they, there was a whole business going on outside 
the temple before you came in. And Jesus upset all that because it wasn't what God required. I wonder what Jesus would do in our day and age. People blow in the church, blow out. We haven't sought God, hadn't prayed, hadn't come uh, willing to worship and give an offering to God. And I'm ta talking about your money. I'm talking about your heart. Mm. God's on a back burner. Oh, we want to talk spiritual. We got the good Baptist spiritual handshake down. God bless you, brother. It's good to see you. Can't stand that guy. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Uh. But can I say, when you came to the temple under God's command, the high priest on Passover day, when he'd offer that lamb, or any day when they had a feast and they were out there slaying animals and putting them on the brazen altar, he had on certain sacrificial clothing. But then he had to go wash himself in the laver. And then he'd have to go and change his garments and put on his priestly robes to go into the house of God. He was to look a certain way when he walked in there. And when he went in there and he had that basin of the blood from those sacrifices and that lamb, and he would go and he would uh, uh, sprinkle that blood on certain places, but he'd put that blood on the mercy seat within the holy place. If he hadn't done everything the way God commanded, his life was taken from him. They'd appoint another high priest and start all over. Now, I wonder if we take it that serious. That every time we come into the holy place, if we're adorned right, have the right spirit, right attitude, if we come in adoring the Lord, we've come in with the right offering, we've done business with God, our hearts are pure, because, friends, every time we do come in the house of God, it's life or death. We either leave closer to God or we leave more dead than we came in. This isn't, well, this is where all my friends go. I'll just go down here and have a good time. No, this is worship of Almighty God. Serious business. We wonder why we don't see more people saved. We wonder why we don't see great revival break out. It's because we don't take God serious. But never make any mistake about this, friend. God always takes it serious. And can I say, everything had to satisfy God's expectation. You know why Jesus had to come? Because the law was given as our schoolmaster to show us that we couldn't be holy in ourselves. There wasn't enough works for us to do to appease God's wrath, to satisfy Him. There was not a lamb that was ever born of a lamb that could satisfy the wrath of God. All of those lambs, all those bulls, every offering that was ever given uh, was all a picture that one day God was going to send the only sacrifice uh, that would appease His wrath. Uh, you see, uh, the Passover feast every year that lamb offered uh, just pushed back the sins of the people one more year. Uh, but when Jesus came, He took away our sin. Uh, he appeased the wrath. Uh, they were looking at the wrong lamb. Uh, that lamb could never satisfy the the wrath of God but the one suspended between heaven and earth it pleased the Lord to bruise him the Lord saw the travail of his soul and he was satisfied and my dear friends every sinner that comes to Jesus and believes on the Lord and gets born again God's wrath again is satisfied and that person does not face eternal damnation but has eternal a life uh, and becomes a citizen of heaven my dear friends uh, by becoming a child of God the only thing that satisfies God is Jesus Christ that's why I'm glad I'm robed in his righteousness that's why brother Adrian we can't understand why God loves us he doesn't love us because of us he loves us because we put our faith in Jesus and Jesus' righteousness has robed us. Uh, uh, Jesus has uh, placed us in His hand. Uh, uh, Jesus has recorded our name in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Can you imagine we've been made joint heirs to the throne of God because of Jesus? 
Jesus who deserves all the praise, all the glory. And in Revelation 5, we're going to do that. But everything that is rightfully His, He shares with us. I can't imagine that. But I bless His holy name. The Campbellites, the Church of Christ crowd that believes you've got to be baptized in order to be saved, number one, they've got, they got a real doctrinal problem. What do you do with the thief on the cross that Jesus said today, Thou shalt be with me in paradise? He didn't get baptized. Can I say this? They always quote Peter. When Peter says we're baptized or we're saved by Jesus' baptism, they're right. But Jesus' baptism is not a water baptism. He was baptized in the wrath of God on Calvary. And it takes what he suffered on Calvary in order to redeem you and I. We're saved by the blood that he shed. And my dear friends, everybody in Jesus is going to make it to glory, just like Noah and his family was in the ark, a picture of Jesus. They made it to the other side, and they were baptized in the wrath of Almighty God for 40 days and 40 nights, just like Jesus was, was faced the wrath of God on Calvary for you and I. Can I say the lamb, by God's command, was to satisfy, satisfy God's ex, expectations. And can I say this? The lamb, by God's expectation, was to secure those under the blood. Did he not say, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you in Exodus chapter 12? Now, Brother Tommy... All the Jews in Egypt, they did not have to put blood over their doorpost. But every one of them would have lost their firstborn. Just like everyone in Egypt lost their firstborn. The only thing that secured life for them was the blood of the Lamb. And can I say by God's command, that's what the Lamb was to do. Secure life. They were looking at the wrong Lamb. The lamb that they were preparing to sacrifice could never bring life. Can I say, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly in John chapter number 10. Can I say, uh, 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 our life is secured in Him. I love in the Old Testament, the city's refuge. Those cities of refuge designed under the law for things that happened by accident. Brother Peter, I know you've worked hard. What is it? Three weeks you've been working every day? Aren't you glad all them taxes are going to take is going to pay for all them illegal immigrants coming to our country to stay in luxury hotels? Isn't that a blessing? Why don't you work three more? We've got, to, we've, got to, we've got about 20 million of them here. We've got to take care of them, all right? Thank you, brother, for doing that. All right? Yeah, take one for the team. Huh? Could you leave out the ones that come in here and murder people? Can you leave them away? Yeah. Huh. But listen, let's say you're, you're working on your property and you're chopping down trees and you didn't take care of your equipment. You do you know, like Brother Ed back there. It's got that big old shop to make sure all of his equipment's always fine-tuned and ready to go. Huh? And you're out there chopping down trees. That's what you're doing. And Brother Josh is one of these illegal immigrants on your property. You don't even know he's there. And the axe head comes off of your axe handle, which you're chopping down the tree, and it splits his head right in two. Huh? And he dies. Under the law, his family could come after you and kill you. A life for life, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But God, who's rich in mercy, said, I'm going to make cities a refuge that if you can get to a city of refuge before his family can get to you, you're safe. But the condition, you're only safe as long as the high priest lives. So if you're in a city of refuge, you want to make sure he eats right, he's treated right, uh, he doesn't do anything strenuous. He doesn't get out in the heat. You want to make sure that, that booger lives a long time. Because when he dies, they open up the door and all the accusers and all the ones that are seeking to avenge their loved ones can come and get you. You know what? Looking at the wrong lamb, they couldn't have life. But see, 
looking at the right lamb. His blood not only gave us refuge, but he's our high priest. And he said, I am he that was dead, now I'm alive, and I have the keys to death and hell, and I'm alive forevermore. Can I say, our high priest is never going to die anymore. And the accuser of the brethren, uh, he can huff and he can puff. Uh, he can tell God how wicked we are. He can tell God we don't deserve heaven. He can tell God whatever he wants to. Uh, but if the blood's been applied to you, uh, if you're a citizen of heaven, uh, if you've been saved and born again, uh, hey, as long as our high priest, the Lord Jesus, is alive, you have refuge. Uh, he's never going to die again. Uh, you have refuge because you've trusted in the proper lamb, my dear friends. Uh, by the way, under the law, if you were known to have perjured yourself, have lied under oath, like most of the people in D.C., under the law, you could not be a witness. Brother Ron, if you was a known perjurer and you witnessed Brother Adrian doing something wicked uh, and they brought you to the council to testify against him uh, and somebody said, wait a second, Brother Ron is a perjurer. You could have seen him. You could have caught him red-handed. Your testimony was no good. Did not Jesus say that Satan was a liar and the father of it? Do you realize when he comes before God to accuse you and I, his witness has no hold? Uh, he's a known perjurer. He's a liar. Uh, uh, he can accuse. He can accuse. He can accuse. Uh, but aren't you glad? Uh, because of the blood, we've been excused. We've been excused. We've been excused. Hallelujah. The Jews was looking at the wrong lamb that day. Can I say many throughout history have trusted in the wrong thing for eternity. They've looked to the wrong religious system. They've prayed to the wrong God. They have sought wrong refuge. But aren't you glad for truth that the Lamb Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And when you look to the real lamb, the true lamb, all of heaven and all the blessings of heaven are ours. I don't have to wait till I get to heaven to receive the blessings. I've been saved 50 years and I've re enjoyed the blessings of God in this life. I've enjoyed peace that passes understanding. I've enjoyed the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, those things. What a blessing to have all the goodness of heaven now and for all of eternity. I'm glad, hallelujah, somebody was preaching to me the correct lamb. I'm glad I put my faith in the correct lamb. I'm thankful for truth tonight. I'm thankful for what Jesus Christ did for me. I didn't ask him to, wouldn't have had enough sense to ask him to, wouldn't have understood it all, uh, uh, even if I would have known how to ask him to. Can I say the night I got saved, I didn't understand all he did that night. I still don't really comprehend everything that I have in Christ, but one day I will, hallelujah, huh? But Jesus did it because he knew that was what it was going to take to redeem you and I. The writer of Hebrews made an interesting statement I've looked at and looked at over the years. Abel's blood still speaketh. Can I help you something? Jesus' blood will forever speak. It speaks forgiveness to the redeemed. And I bless the Lord. If you're here tonight and you put your faith in the right lamb, you have cause to rejoice. You didn't deserve him. And it's only by his mercy you wasn't born in a part of the world that's never even heard his name. It's only by his mercy that somebody cared enough about you to tell him about him, to preach to you about him. It's only by his mercy that you do know the truth. And for that, you ought to be thankful and you ought to not be ashamed of the goodness and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, you might want to come and just say, Thank you, Lord that I got to know the right lamb.
that I focused on the right lamb when I found out I was a sinner and you died for my sin. Maybe tonight you need to come and just tell him you love him because he first loved you. Maybe tonight it's been a while since you realized all he'd done for you and you just need to come tonight and just throw yourself at his mercy and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe tonight you don't know him. You put your faith and trust in something that cannot save and the Lord's revealed it to you tonight. Why don't you come tonight and why don't you come and ask God to save you? Never forget the courage Joseph and Nicodemus had. Never forget the cost and the care and all that. When was the last time you stood in courage? When was the last time you paid the cost? When was the last time you cared for Jesus like Jesus cares for you? God help us to take their example and show the world who they really need to focus on. Let's all stand tonight. Miss Tina, if you'll come. Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. Maybe the Lord spoke to you about something totally different what we preached on. You just mind the Lord tonight. While they're getting a song ready, let's pray. Father, thank you for the Word of God. Lord, thank you that when we were preparing for a day, you interrupted us and showed us the right way. Thank you, Lord, for our Lamb, the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord, that He's coming back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Now, Father, bless in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Glorify your name's sake. And, Father, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.